Welcome to the Bleachwatch Egypt training workshop. By the end of this workshop, you will know what coral bleaching is, what Bleachwatch is, how you can help, how it works, and what happens after you participate. Let's begin. So what is coral bleaching? To start with, corals are marine animals belonging to the class Anthozoa. They typically live in compact colonies of many identical polyps. Together, hundreds and thousands of these colonies can build magnificent reefs visible from space. Corals live in symbiosis with unicellular algae called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae live within coral tissues and, in exchange for protection, they provide 90% of the energy required by corals. Not only this, but these microalgae also give corals their wonderful colors. Under stressful conditions, the symbiotic relationship between corals and zooxanthellae is disrupted and the algae are expelled. This leaves the coral tissue transparent, revealing the white skeleton beneath and giving the coral a bleached appearance. There are many possible causes for coral bleaching at the local scale. Inflow of valley floodwaters, pollutants, disease, sedimentation, and intensive fishing are only a few examples. However, there is only one factor that can cause massive bleaching. Rising sea temperature. Bleached corals are still alive. If stressful conditions subside quickly enough, the algae can repopulate their tissues and the corals can survive the bleaching event. However, if the stress is severe and or persistent, bleaching can reach a point of no return and cause the corals to die. In order to better understand the bleaching process and recovery patterns, researchers need large amounts of data which they cannot possibly collect on their own. This is why Bleachwatch was originally created, and this is where you can pitch in. Let's see in detail what the Bleachwatch program is. Bleachwatch is a community-based monitoring program that was started in 2002 in the Great Barrier Reef National Park to survey a massive bleaching event. It is an example of a highly successful partnership between reef managers and reef users that employs a standardized method to evaluate bleaching. Together, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, and the Hagada Environmental Protection and Conservation Association, HEPCA, have brought the Bleachwatch program to Egypt. HEPCA is an environmental, non-government organization based in Hergada and primarily concerned with the protection of the Red Sea environment. Since 1990, HEPCA has put in place the largest mooring system in the world, covering the entire Red Sea. HEPCA organizes many community service programs, including educational programs and environmental campaigns, as well as research projects. Bleachwatch aims to inform the community about coral bleaching and encourage tour operators, organizations and individuals to participate in surveying coral bleaching. It also hopes to detect the early stages of massive coral bleaching events over a wide geographic range. In Egypt, Bleachwatch aims to help better understand the effects of bleaching on Red Sea reefs by establishing a network of regular reef users who monitor and report reef conditions at 25 fixed sites. Anyone can be involved in Bleachwatch. We encourage irregular and on-off reef visitors to also submit observations on reef status and coral bleaching. The data submitted by Bleachwatch observers will be compiled into summary reports that will be made available online on the HEPCA website. The data will be reviewed periodically to identify seemingly endangered areas and then send experts to these areas to carry out detailed bleaching surveys. So, how exactly does Bleachwatch work? 
participants are asked to fill out a monitoring form after one of their dives and then report the information collected to HEPCA. The form consists of five sections. In section 1, provide your personal information. In section 2, enter details about the site you have been monitoring. Ask your dive guide for GPS position and other details if necessary. This is a very important section. The information you provide here is essential in order for expert researchers to be able to find the site again if necessary. The third section is about reef conditions. First, estimate the coverage of live coral at the site you are monitoring. Use table 1 to help you. This is only a rough estimate, so don't stress yourself too much about being very precise. Then, using the coral life forms sheet, rank in order of abundance the three most common life forms present at the site. The fourth section is concerned with bleaching. This is one of the most important sections of the form. Using table 1 again, estimate the percentage of bleached coral in all the live coral you observed. Then, indicate all the coral types present using your life forms sheet and whether or not they are bleached. After that, indicate the severity of the bleaching using the back of your life forms sheet to help you. Finally, add the depth range at which you observed any bleaching. On the back of the monitoring form, you can add your comments and let us know what you saw. We are particularly interested in rubbish found on the reef, coral breakage and marine megafauna. Don't forget to add your suggestions regarding the project too. All you need in order to be a bleach watch observer is a slate and pencil, and don't forget to prepare your slate before your dive a laminated copy of the life forms sheet and a monitoring form to fill once you are out of the water. All these tools come in the bleach watch kit for divers. Before you arrive at your survey site you need to have an idea of how you are going to carry out the survey. There are many ways by which you can do it. We suggest that you pick a sector of the reef, focus on it and note the habitat type. Estimate the percentage of coral cover and bleached coral as indicated in the monitoring form. If you have an underwater camera, it may be useful to take pictures and send them to us at bleachwatch at hepka.com. Now that you have carried out the survey and filled the form, you will need to report your data. To do that, you can ask your dive center to mail off back the monitoring form to our office, or better yet, you can email us your report. If you wish to send your data by email, you will need to fill a digital report form, which is a Microsoft Excel file containing four worksheets. In the first sheet, enter information about your dive center. This section is usually already completed for you by HEPCA. The second sheet is about you. The first two lines are identification codes that will be assigned by HEPCA. Specify whether you are a regular or irregular observer. Regular means that you are sending reports on a weekly basis. If you wish, add your email address so that we are able to keep you updated on the project and add you to our mailing list. The third sheet is about your survey. Copy the information you put in your monitoring form. Use the codes and categories in the instructions sheet, sheet 4, to help you. Once you've completed the form, save it. Rename it with your family name, site name and date of survey, separated by underscores. And send it as an email attachment to bleachwatch at hepka.com. Don't forget that corals are very delicate 
and may be stressed even if they are not bleached. Your behavior underwater can add to their stress. Therefore, good buoyancy control, streamlined equipment, and proper awareness of body positioning are all very important elements to keep in mind. Now, take your slate and enjoy your dive. Thank you very much for your contribution, and we hope you return to do more Bleach Watch surveys very soon. <laughs>